Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we're here to talk about a couple of things. My daughter's homecoming dress but we're also here to talk about sewing fails and how to analyze those and what that means and um, how to avoid too many of those. But also a reminder that it happens to everyone. But before we get into that, um, today is Friday, which means we have a Love Notions feature Friday pattern. And um, today it is the uh, Rockford Raglan um, t-shirt pattern that is $5 today only, as well as the um, corresponding um, kids pattern, which is the Wrigley. So those Raglan, both of those are on sale today um, only for $5. And if you use my code Whitney10, you can get an additional 10% off that sale price. So if you're looking for a really good palette cleanser, just an easy Raglan style t-shirt, um, that's a really great one um, to use for, um, yeah, just for color blocking, for if you do anything with the vinyls on the front, they can make really fun um, like graphic tees and that sort of thing. So um, yes, $5 today only. Okay, let's talk about sewing fails. <laughs> Let me give you a little bit of a backstory uh, before we get into the, the actual winner of a homecoming dress that I made for my daughter. Um, so my daughter um, is a junior in high school and um, she's gone to homecoming the past two years um, with a group of friends. And um, our homecoming dance also, as a quick side note, I get asked a lot, what is homecoming? Because that's something we have here in the U.S. that we don't have in other parts of the world. Homecoming is a celebration of um, alumni basically coming back to their alma maters, their schools, and usually there's a football game involved and um, a party, but it's basically a celebration of coming home back to where um, you came from. So reunions happen about this time, all that kind of stuff as alumni come back. But um, another kind of part of it, the current students will celebrate with like school spirit and that sort of thing. So there's always a dance involved. There's a big football, American football game um, that's involved and um, usually a whole spirit week. So a parade, um, all sorts of activities. They dress up at school, that kind of stuff, um, like costume type dress up at school for different themed part, you know, days during the week. It's a whole big thing. But that is kind of what homecoming is. But the dance that comes at the very end. And so the football game will be on a Friday night, and then on Saturday is usually a dance. Um, ours is, um, I think they call it semi-formal, but I mean, girls are wearing sparkly dresses. Typically, though, this dance is more shorter dresses, whereas prom, for instance, are your floor-length gowns, um, uh, the definitely more of a formal event. But I would say my kids' um, homecoming is much more formal than it was when I did homecoming dance when I was in high school. Um, but that being said, she's gone the past couple of years, but she didn't mention anything really about this year. And, and I'd asked her, I was like, are you planning on going to homecoming? And she's like, well, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, my friend group hasn't really decided, um, you know, all that kind of yada yada. And um, about a week and a half maybe before the dance, maybe two weeks before the dance, she tells me, okay, we've decided we're going to homecoming. And I said, great, what are you gonna wear? <laughs> what are you gonna wear? And she's like, I mean, I'm sure I've got something in my closet. And we kind of looked a little bit and maybe she could have worn something that she wore to the wedding festivities back in um, June to my cousin's wedding. But most of those, they just weren't formal enough. You know, they were nice dresses and um, that sort of thing, but they just weren't quite formal enough. So I was like, oh my gosh, okay. We'll make you an easy dress that, um, you know, that you can dress up for with jewelry and sparkly shoes and you'll be set for homecoming. You know, we're not going to put as much time into it as I put into the previous two years. So that's kind of the basis of where we were coming at for this. So this is where the mistakes started happening. <laughs> So I retook her measurements because she has grown a little bit since um, I've sewn for her recently. And I was kind of noticing that, not a ton, but I, I was time for new measurements. You know, it was time just to, to take new measurements. It did put her in a new size. So um, mistake one was that um, I was working on a very strict timeline. Um, mistake two is that I was having to um, pick a new size for her. So I was working off of new information. This wasn't, you know, I'm used to making this size for her in this pattern company. So I know that this is going to work and these are your alterations I need to make. Um, we were having to adjust for that a little bit because she was in a different size. So that was, that was point number two. And also because of the rush, 
um, I was picking the pattern based on ease of construction and not so much, and she okayed the style, but not really taking into account um, her preferences when it comes to silhouette. <laughs> okay, so all those combined to this dress here, which looks quite lovely, although it hasn't, the sleeves and the skirt have not been hemmed on this. So this pattern is Simplicity, I'm looking at it over here, 9701, which is a Mimi G pattern. And I had purchased this, I think I purchased this with her in mind, uh, quite a few Simplicity sales ago. Um, but I grabbed this one because I liked that it was fitted, which she enjoys. Um, she likes showing off her figure. So like her smaller waist, fuller hips. Her, she likes showing off her hourglass figure. Um, and I could see that in the, uh, in the, picture of Mimi G on the front, and I thought the neckline was really attractive. And it's a Ponte dress. Um, comes with like a partial lining on the inside to finish off the neckline, but for the most part, Ponte dress should be an easy make. And it was an easy make. <laughs> um, so number one, again, making a new size for her. So I know in my head that the commercial patterns run bigger than, um, than maybe what you'd like, more ease in it. And I will say, the way that the dress is fitting Mimi G on the front, if I had picked the size based, and I, and I didn't, I did size down, but if I had picked the size based on her measurements and the, the size chart, it would not look anywhere near like the way it looks like on Mimi G. Um, like there is way less ease in the, the dress that Mimi G is wearing on the front, which is the look we wanted. Um, and I know that, I know that about commercial patterns. So, um, it was having her in one size. I'm like, I'm just going to size down one. Um, it's a little harder with knit patterns to look at the finished measurements and determine if that's going to work or not. Um, but you know, I picked, I did pick the size based on how I pick my own size with the commercial patterns. Um, but didn't do like any kind of a mock-up. And again, I was choosing a new size for her than I have made in the past. And um, so that was mistake number whatever we're on. <laughs> so um, I just dove in with a size that I thought might work. Um, guys, this thing was huge on her. And I am going to put footage of her in the fail dress because I told her, I'm like, this is important for us to look, uh, to show the channel. I ended up taking, so there is a center back seam on this dress. I ended up taking two inches out of the center back neckline and then took it to nothing about mid back to take it in um, that, that seam because it was gaping so badly in the back. The neckline is still way too big on her. It's way too far wide. wide. It's just the size is too big. And then uh, the what you're seeing her wear, I ended up taking probably two inches, maybe more, out of the side seams um, just to give it a little bit more shape. She put it on the first time and she's like, this looks like a pillowcase, <laughs> which was being a little dramatic, a little dramatic. Um, so it was just way too big and I altered it as much as I could and still the neckline is way too big on her and there was really nothing that I could do other than what I did do in taking that, that center back seam out, um, to pull out some of the width back there. Um, we just needed at least one, maybe two sizes smaller than what I made here. Um, so that was problem number one. Um, and then, like I said, I went for ease of dress and this is an easy one to make, not really thinking about the way she likes to wear her clothes. So like I said, she likes things that are a little bit more figure huggery, especially things that highlight her waist, which is, um, a part of her body that she likes to highlight. She has a very small waist, um, and she likes to highlight her hourglass figure. She did not like this dress. Now, I'm sure people will argue with me, like, it, it is a fitted dress. And that's what I said. It is a fitted dress. But she, even with the side seams taken in, said it still looked like a pillowcase because it doesn't cinch in at the waist. I think that is what I nailed down that was her biggest issue with the dress. It just doesn't cinch in at the waist. And a great way to cinch in at the waist is with a waist seam. <laughs> so um, that was a big thing. 
Um, and after I tried to alter it, I'm like, okay, we're going to scrap this one. It's just not working for us and move on to something else. Um, because we're running out of time, you know, now we're down to, uh, less than a week before the dance and I've got to get her something made up. This was a Ponty from my stash and it is in her color palette. I love her in this, this kind of, a um, sagey green. It matches her eyes really well. She's kind of got a mossy, um, green, gray, green eye. They're green, but it's kind of a mossy green. Um, so it's a gray color. Um, uh, and this looks really, really good on her. So, um, anyway. It, this was the fail dress, and that is why it failed and why it's important to not go into sewing projects rushed, but to take our time and take into account sizing as well as silhouettes that we prefer and not just necessarily hurrying and going with the easy route. So, lesson learned. <laughs> I still make these mistakes. Okay, so then I had to find a dress that I thought is going to work. So I'm like, okay, number one, we need to find something that cinches in at the waist. Like that's going to be the big thing for her. I had been eyeing a couple of different pattern companies for her. One being Dressmakers Amore um, and the other one being um, So Love to Sew, Love to Sew Patterns. Um, I've been looking at both of those. And ultimately, well, Jenny's daughter actually sewed her own homecoming dress. And um, as I was looking at the Dressmaker Amore, I'm like, I think that might be the dress that she's making for herself. <laughs> The one I'd highlighted that I thought would be good for my daughter, and it was, so I'm glad we didn't go that route. But we ended up, um, I, I showed her a couple of options, and she picked out the Love to Sew Chloe dress, which is what this is. And it comes with a couple of different options. It comes with um, the short above the knee or kind of a midi that has a slit that goes up the front. She thought that the above the knee would be perfect for the dance. You know, everyone wears, like, shorter dresses for this, um, for this type of, of dance, and that was going to work. And I also had this gorgeous silver, this is a silk file. Um, and what file um, is, is it's a, a weave of the fabric and it has kind of a ribbed pattern. Now it's woven, so it doesn't have any stretch. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see that. Can you hear the ribbed though? It's got a rib texture on it, but that is what is file. Um, and this is a silk file from uh, my mentor Joyce. This came from her stash. Make sure I just didn't get makeup on the dress. Um, so this was one of those pieces that I grabbed from her. And honestly, when I was pulling this out of Joyce's stash, in my head, I'm like, this would make a great formal dress for um, Ava one day. And it came in perfect. And actually, there's a ton of this fabric. I still have quite a bit left over um, if she wanted like a skirt or something. Silver is one of the metals that she can easily wear. This is part of her color palette. So that worked out really well. And um, it's got a waist seam, which she loved, and kind of a little bit of an A-line skirt, which really works well for highlighting her um, hourglass figure. But it does have this little shelf bra um, here at the top. Now, I had to make this without making any kind of a mock-up or muslin or anything like that. I was going off of finished garment measurements and then doing the full bust adjustment per that. Um, so I did do a full bust adjustment. I think I added an inch um, on each side. So for an extra two inches across the cup, we could have more length. Um, it's, it's, the seam isn't sitting quite underneath her bust where it should, but it worked fine for what we were doing. Um, once I made it up, we did go in and we've got um, these little kind of princess seams that are up underneath the cup here. I did end up taking those in an extra three eighths, well, three quarters of an inch, I guess, three eighths on each side. Um, well, on each side. So an extra, I took like an inch and a half, I guess, out right here at the waist, um, going down to the skirt, just to kind of suck it into her body just a little bit more. And that worked out really well. Um, it's got a little invisible zipper down here at the back. I, the pattern calls for lining just the, um, cup portion of the top. So just like this top portion, I went ahead and just did it aligning and lined the entire bodice. In fact, I'll show you. Um, I went ahead and, and took the lining all the way down to the waist seam because that just made sense for me. And I had this white china silk that was in my stash that worked out. I mean, if you're going to go with a silk outer, might as well go with a silk inner. And um, that worked out really, really well um, as well. <laughs> um, the pattern also has pockets. You can see the pockets that are there. Huge pockets. So she was able to get away without having to take a purse. She was able to put her student ID and her phone into her pocket and call it good. Um, we paired it with some sparkly silver sandals, um, high-heeled sandals, and then appropriate jewelry, a bold lip, 
and she was ready to rock and roll. Um, and I, I think she's, it was very pleased with how this wore and how it looked. Now we also could have done with the strapless bra. Her, um, strapless bra also needs to be replaced. <laughs> we, it would have been helpful if we had tried that on before the night of. Um, so she just had to wear a nude to her colored bra and hope that her straps stayed in as well as possible. They're peeking out a little bit in these, um, straps, but that was a last minute I felt very unprepared for this dance, but we got there in the end. She had a wonderful time. Um, she and her friends were at the dance the entire time. They danced, they chatted, they played the activities, they did all the things, um, and she looked wonderful in the dress. So all in all, a successful uh, make is what came of it. And um, yeah, we'll see. Um, I don't know if she'll have a more occasion to wear this dress, but it's going back in the closet and um, We'll see what she's got, you know, coming up in the future. And if she needs a silk silver dress, we've got one. <laughs> we have got one now in her wardrobe. Uh, and this went together, you know, relatively easy. I did have a moment, my in-laws were here as well. And when I was slip stitching the um, lining to the waist on the inside um, to close that up, I had licked my fingers and tied off the thread and I had lipstick on and got lipstick on my finger when I was tying off the thread and didn't realize it. So I grabbed the dress to then do my hand stitching and got lipstick on the outside of the dress. <laughs> a little bit, and I'm talking such a small little bit of Dawn dish soap, uh, the blue Dawn dish soap. Like literally I just took a wet paper towel and dabbed the top of the bottle where there was just like a little residue and rubbed at it and it came right out, thank goodness. I was so worried the silk was gonna spot um, because I didn't pre-wash this. Um, this fabric frayed like nobody's business. Um, so I did surge everything on the inside because I was just looking at it and this fabric was fraying um, to do that. But I mean, it again, it came out beautifully. She loved you know, the pockets, she loved everything about it. She was happy. So there you have it. That is my daughter's uh, junior year homecoming dress. Um, we will probably be doing prom this year. She's eligible to go to prom this year, so I'm assuming that she will be going to that dance as well. That'll be a much more involved project, I'm sure, getting a beautiful prom dress put together. I think she's gonna help me design it. Um, she's been doing a little bit of um, dress design for her, um, oh, the International Baccalaureate program that she's in for her diploma. Um, for high school diploma. She has taken a visual arts, um, that's like her, her emphasis, I guess, in that program. And so she's having to do some things in the art realm that she wouldn't normally do, but you have to have it for your portfolio at the end. Um, so she's been doing a little bit of fashion sketching and uh, I think is going to be excited to make her prom dress dreams um, in her head come true, which will be me sewing it, I'm sure. But um, just to have her a lot more input on that from her is going to be really fun. So that won't be until the spring. So you've got we got some time, um, but stay tuned for that. And just a small little lesson on the importance of slowing down, even if you're on a tight deadline. Don't rush things. Think things through before you go and just waste time making a dress that doesn't work. <laughs> All right, guys, that is all I have for today. I hope you're having a fabulous Friday. Um, I will see you guys again on Tuesday, and I've got some really fun, um, well, Tuesday is a really fun video that's coming up. We're gonna be talking about um, the quiet luxury trend that's been going on. If you guys have heard about that, we're gonna be um, talking a little bit more about what that is, the quiet luxury trend, and how you can recreate it for yourself. And then um, I've got some exciting footage coming up, the next, probably three videos worth, honestly, of um, inspiration and all sorts of stuff that's gonna be coming up. I'm not gonna go too much into it, um, but uh, yeah, we've got some good stuff. I'm going on a little trip, folks. In fact, when you're watching this, I'll be back from said trip, but um, I can't wait to share everything, um, some videos um, in relation to that as well, and stay tuned for more on that. So if you haven't already, hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the fun content, and um, I will see you guys again on Tuesday. Have a great weekend and get some sewing in, and I'll see you then.